Hey everyone, welcome back to today's Prime 5. We got five big stories for you today. We got an MPD report. We got Miyamoto giving advice to other game developers on how to make successful franchises. We got some new pre-order bonus news as well. And what about Twitch? Twitch is doing some weird things that ultimately might lead to its eventual death. What? Yeah, we get to get a little dark today on Prime 5. So if you enjoy this content, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. And without further ado, let's get into the news. Our first story deals with the MPD, which dropped yesterday for the month of August. It's actually a little bit late this month. And on the MPD, we have, for the first time since a single month in 2021, PlayStation 5 has become the number one selling system in terms of units and dollar sales, knocking Switch off its unit sales throne it has had all year. Now, all news is bad for Switch as it remains the, t the leader in total unit sales for 2022, PlayStation 5 leads in dollar sales, while Madden 23 took the number one slot for the 23rd consecutive August, by the way, and Saints Row actually debuted at number two, Marvel's Spider-Man actually saw a jump from 84 to number three, thanks mostly to the PC release of the game. Hey, good on you, PC gamers. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came in at number 6, maintaining its top 10 selling power since launch. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 also stayed inside the top 10, dropping from number 4 to number 10 for its second month on the charts. This is an historically great hold, as no prior Xenoblade game held itself inside the top 10 after launch month. Nintendo published games, by the way. Just as a reminder, don't count digital sales. So it's doing this just off physical. Smash Bros. came in at number 16. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is still in the top 20 at 18. And Pokemon Legends Arceus remains in the top 20 on the list at number 20. Overall, these are some really good numbers for Nintendo, irregardless of losing the number one sales slot. We'll see what happens for the month of September, because they did have Splatoon 3 this month, which might have vaulted Switch back to number one. Time will tell. So we talked a little bit briefly about the GTA 6 leak that happened over the weekend, and FBI. We talked about all this stuff in our last Prime 5, but today another part of Take Two's company got hacked and we get to talk about 2K. So the 2K support team got hacked. Today, 2K on Twitter announced that they became aware of an unauthorized third party who gained access to credentials for a third party vendor that helps with their help desk platform, then through that sent malicious links to gamers with accounts on their system. It is unknown if this is also related to the server hack that led to GTA 6 leads over the weekend, as 2K and Rockstar are both owned by Take-Two. If you did click on one of those links through customer support, here are the steps they say to ensure your own security. So reset any user control passwords stored in your web browser, example Chrome's autofill. Enable multi-factor identification whenever available, especially on personal email, banking, and phone or internet provider accounts. Avoid using multi-factor authentication that relies on text message verification. Using an authenticator app would be the most secure method. Install and run a reputable antivirus program. Also, you should use an anti-malware program because not all antivirus programs help. Check your account settings to see if any forwarding rules have been added or changed on your personal and email accounts. And as someone who had my YouTube channel and my email and my full account hacked last year, I can't stress how much it is important to do these steps, even if you weren't involved and did not click on those malicious links. It'll just help keep your account secure for longer. Next up, an old interview from Miyamoto is brought back up from 1989 from Beat Magazine because it never was translated and thus most of the world is unaware of it. But Shigeru Miyamoto gave some great advice to developers back then that still applies today. He said, well, what's worked for me so far is finding something I want to make that matches up with what the market currently needs. If you believe in your idea and that it's something people want, then all that remains is for you to polish and raise it to a sufficient level of quality. So no matter how talented of a staff you've been blessed with, if you don't have a clear direction for your idea, I don't think a good game can come of it. Again, this is just some sage advice for Miyamoto that I still think applies to game development today. However, you game developers out there will have to let me know how useful is this advice to you. It is sort of a general advice, but it is something that I think 
maybe is forgotten at times in the industry. A brand new pre-order bonus was announced today for Sparks of Hope, especially if you live in the UK, and that's because if you order on the My Nintendo store in the UK, you get a special steelbook. Now, notably, you can still get a steelbook here in the United States, but only if you pre-order the gold edition at specific retailers, which, hey, by the way, I personally have my pre-order in for the gold edition at Best Buy, which means I'm gonna get a steelbook. Notably, the steelbook is different than the one they're getting in the UK, because that's just the way it goes. If you're someone that wants to collect all these things, it becomes insanely expensive. But yes, I will put pre-order links for the Best Buy one down below. It does help support the channel. Thank you very much if you decide to use our link. And our last story deals with Twitch. Now, Twitch has been making a number of changes over the last year that have really upset their content creators. This might top the cake because they decided to defend some of those choices. They did a blog post defending and updating their revenue split with content creators. They claim someone streaming 200 hours per month cost them around $1,000 in server fees. They do this to justify the change from a 70-30 revenue split to 50-50 revenue splits. Keep in mind that $1,000 per month server cost only applies to streamers who have an average of 100 viewers or more. So if you're someone who just streams on Twitch a lot, but you only got like four or five viewers, it kind of costs them pennies. But if you have 100 viewers or more, it does cost them a little bit of change. Change. They double down on the 50-50 revenue split. Huge streamers are currently getting 70-30, but for now on, that's only going to apply to their first 100K in earnings. And the 100K in earnings is total. This isn't what they make. This isn't net. This is 100K total. So they were already taking, you know, of, of that 100K, taking 30,000 of it. Well, anything after that 100K, it's gonna be 50, 50. This deals with their subscriber system where you pay money to sub to a channel. To put this in perspective, as someone who streams on YouTube, everything on YouTube is essentially 70-30. Super Chats, 70-30. Technically, Twitch's bit system is exactly the same. The content creator gets 100%, but and when you buy, when you go to buy bits, they take 30% off the charge already and only give you 70% of the value of your dollar in bits. So yeah, they take the 70-30 split as well. They just take it right off the top when you purchase it. Um, YouTube memberships are also 70-30 in comparison to the 50-50 they're doing over on Twitch, which just adds to that controversy. Twitch's ad revenue split is 55 for creators and 45 for them, which isn't horrible. YouTube has the same split recently announced for YouTube Shorts, but base YouTube content like this video is at minimum 55, 45, but more premium ads can go as high as 68, 32 for the content creator. Essentially, the better you're doing on the YouTube platform, the bigger advertising fish you draw to your channel, the more revenue YouTube will allocate to you percentage-wise from the ad spots. Naturally, this all comes across poorly for Twitch when so many big streamers have been leaving their platform already because of their lack of new features and messing around with money in ways where YouTube is consistent. Twitch is also owned by Amazon, just like YouTube is by Google. So investing in themselves shouldn't be a huge issue should they want to. Many have already felt this may be the beginning of the end, especially as streaming on YouTube is starting to become more discoverable over the years, which is really the number one issue with streaming on YouTube. It's just, it's really hard to get discovered, but it's gotten better. I can say that for a fact. My literal Nintendo Prime channel, my Nintendo Prime podcast channel that's been growing as I've been live streaming more over there, has been growing on its own with very little promotion over here because yes, it is becoming easier to be discovered for live streams. So, hey, Take that for what you will. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Give me your thoughts on all these news stories down below, whether it's the Miyamoto stuff or Twitch or Sparks of Hope or whatever the case is. There's a lot of stories today. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll catch you guys hopefully tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Here's that promotion I don't do very often. We have the Nintendo Prime Podcast tonight at 8 p.m. Central on the Nintendo Prime YouTube channel or on the Nintendo Prime Podcast YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that at the top of the description, so if you guys want to go check out that podcast tonight. Thank you, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.